Azrael the Abyss, Prince of Sorrow. <laughs> okay. What's that from? Uh, goth talk on um, goth- SNL. Goth speak. Uh, no, I'm not tall. I'm Azrael the Abyss. <laughs> I haven't watched SNL in yeah. a long time. I take it it's probably streamed on Peacock, though. Ah, probably. Take it. Got there. Peacock in there right away at the beginning right. of the yeah, show. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> Olympic to Pepcat. The, the Olympics are over, so that's true. Its usefulness isn't over yet, though, because now it's the women's Tour de France. There you go. And then I think we've got another. We've got the Vuelta or something coming up. Did you guys watch any of the track cycling on the Peacock? Mm-hmm. Very briefly, one one race, and it was pretty insane. So, when we're done with the show, at least for a little bit, we got to watch part of the Madison, which is the one that has the most people on the track at the same time. And there's two guys on a team, and it's the deal where they grab the guy that's tagging and off and them. fling him, <laughs> whether it's into another guy or into the side of the track or whatever i don't know but it's it's very bicycle ex- roller derby yeah very that's exciting. what it sounded like <laughs> yeah kind of like um rollerball right didn't they used to that was a pretty good movie it's been a long time all right everybody it's full spectrum cycling got off to a rousing start there mm-hmm. this is number 267 already that's tony right there with the uh, msc alien same on. one as last week sorry just did you wash it i of course i wore did it. you wash it i wash all my clothes <laughs> weekly J- JK looks like he was at a at a club meeting today with his yes, fancy shirt on. in the seminar all day long. Seminar for Oof. stuff you're never going to use? Oof. No, stuff I'm going to use next year. Oh, right on. Well, at least you have a head start. <laughs> right. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, yeah, Madison. So I, the Olympics are over, but that was an amazing thing. It's 200 laps of however long a track track is. So it, it took about an hour. Wow. Very cool. And it's super for, I mean, even though, judging by the name, can you guess where it might have been started? Yeah, Madison. Madison Square Garden. Uh-huh. Uh, still Madison. Yeah. Um, but it was back in the early part of the century when they did the six-day race stuff. And it's real popular in Europe now, but it, it really isn't super popular here. I don't think any Americans were even in it. If they were, they didn't do very well. Rem- but, reminds uh, me of... Um, Years ago, I met a gentleman at the UWM library who talked about how his father, back in the old country, worked for Fiat. And he told me that on the top of the uh, factory was a racetrack. Oh, yeah. There's, and I was I've seen like, pictures of it. I'm like, I think this guy's full of shit. And then I went back to my office. I'm like, oh, my God. There's legitimately a huge racetrack yeah. on the roof of the with, Fiat with factory. Like bank it's turns. still there. Yeah, with yeah. bank turns that are like... 90, 90 degrees Bank. or something. Yeah, it's cool. So, it's, you, I'm so, like, so you don't go flying off right. the, the ninth floor of the building or whatever <laughs> right. it is. I bet someone has, just for fun. <laughs> Got a parachute. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Um, I, yeah, it's, I've seen pictures. It's been there forever. Mm-hmm. Oh, it's been going on around town, town. Here, here's something I got a question about because it's coming up in a week or two, two weeks. Is Tour de Towner happening on the traditional Sunday before Labor Day? Is it already that time again? Yeah. I'd say yes. Holy all shit. signs all signs point to yes. And whether it's officially happening or not, wow. it's officially happening because I'm going to do it no matter what. 10 a.m. sharp. 10 a.m. at Uptowner Center and... Uh, Slightly sharp. Didn't we just do this? Humble- kind of dull. Memorial Day. Oh, is it twice? Yeah. Is that why I didn't realize that? Okay. It's the beginning of the summer and the end of the summer. Okay. So the end of the right. summer is already coming. Yeah. Kids so are kids are moving into uh, dorm rooms. And yeah, 24th, right? 20, no, 28th. 28th campus, is, campus employees are going to seminars. Yeah, yeah. Well, there you go. <laughs> campus employees are moving uh, across campus. Uh, Sven's oh. are, are plunging their freaking uh, drain in the basement that overflowed today. So, oh. so Roto-Rooter's coming in the morning. I don't, I don't know if I, I must not explain how old houses work very well. I think I've got the don't use the microwave and the toaster at the same time. Yeah. 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 Uh, got that one pretty well down. But now dishwasher plus washing machine, maybe. Don't do that. Don't do that. I don't know. Also, did you get the drain? I got it to drain, which was kind of cool. I got plunge, 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 plunge. And there was probably at the drain itself four inches of water. Okay. 
So I didn't, it, you know, it's sloped down to it. It got a little bit of stuff wet, but not bad. And I think it was mostly dishwasher and washing machine, not be fine. poop and pee. Right. <laughs> um, <Yeah>. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it took a while, but once it went, I swear to God, it could have sucked all the ch- curtains off the walls. It was really sucking good. So I'm like, well, I'm still having Roto Order to come and do a little Roto really rooting. expensive? Yeah, with the coupon, 295 it's way cheaper than mine when I had him have him come out on a Sunday. Yeah. Uh, well, I, so I have it typically done every two years, but apparently I went three years and that was one year too long. Oh, uh, bummer. I just, it's, there's the bit, the tree on the parkway, just it's, even though they. Roots are everywhere. Well, they did the, they did the sewer lateral line halfway up into my yard. And I thought, well, that should take care of that. Remind but, me to uh, tell you a story about this. It doesn't need to be wasting our time <laughs> right it, now. Does it have poop and pee in it? It does. <laughs> it has River West 24, poop and pee in it. Oh, right on. Okay. And a poor man having to cut my lateral in that they forgot. Oh, well. And think about how much poop and pee was coming out of that when he cut the hole. Yeah. Molly said he never saw a man get naked faster in her life. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Yeah. Let's talk about that later. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, so tour to Towner and then, uh, coming up, uh, Sunday, this Saturday, Saturday, this Saturday, week Saturday. Is, is, uh, center street days. Yeah, it is, it is. Which is a heck of a fun thing with the, uh, especially it's right away. Decent weather too, I think, right? Let yeah. Me, let me consult I, the computer. I think, uh, maybe, maybe tomorrow and, uh, yesterday were rainy, I believe. Uh, Thursday, Friday. <laughs> Ooh, Saturday is 40% chance of rain, guys. Mm-hmm. No. I want to get. Refreshing. I like to get that that art cart race off right at the beginning. Make yep. sure that that happens because that's a lot of fun. Yeah, but they're saying ah, it'll be fine. We should make a cart. We the afternoon time. might be heavy. They couldn't get a cart done. An mm. extra cycle powered cart. I think Voodoo well, we can't do that. I think oh. I think Voodoo is getting pushed by uh, Seanette for either like comp- Towner or Towner slash for Martha sponsored. Huh. Whatever. Uh, oh, okay. Like that. Oh, he's getting pushed on a cart, not getting yeah. pushed off the stage. No, no, no. Yeah, because yeah. he's <laughs> <laughs> gotcha. Uh, so that'll be a fun thing. Uh, the, the 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 Graham that got smoked on his motorcycle right at that corner is going to have some sort of benefity thing or yeah, well, one of remembrance. His, one deal. of his bands was supposed to play the yeah, quarter stage at three forty five. That's sad. Was this his so, first day having a motorcycle? I heard. Well, it was the first. He just got that motorcycle the day before, but he oh. was not. He's that an was accomplished not his, rider. Right. Okay. It was, I don't know how accomplished he was, but it wasn't his first motorcycle. That sucks. Yeah, at some early hour of the morning. and Well, yeah. We're yeah. Yeah, but whatever. Um, Tony's got a new bike. Let's hear about your new bike, Tony. Tony, Tony. Bike. Right, you know, sometimes you got to talk about lemons and lemonade. Right. Yep, for sure. So, you know, I got to, I don't know what year it is yet. I haven't done any research because I don't care. But I got a uh, twenty-two hundred dollar extra cycle edge runner for four hundred bucks. I, I swear to God, the guy never used the thing. He, <laughs> it it you you it's helped me take it apart. It's it a was, garage clean. It for was sure. like brand. There's cobwebs in the wheels. There's dust everywhere. And last night it went thirty-three miles an hour with that e-assist kit. That <laughs> I wasn't even noticing it until I looked down at the gauge and said thirty-three and. Needless to say, depress the brakes rather rapidly. Yeah, yeah. So it's. But yes, I have. Uh, I lost my my. I feel bad that my Chineseium cargo bike was stolen because uh, I lost some really good parts. But I think in the long run, I am getting a lot nicer bicycle to ride. Yeah, I th- for sure. You know, it's um, it's a bike that they before they've got the integrated motor setup that they have now. They offered it with a bolt-on mid-drive mm-hmm. Bafang kit, which is similar to what we slapped on the thing over the last day or well, two. BB, BBSO2, 750 yeah. watts, more than enough. Yeah, yeah, that's nominal, so it's probably like 1,200 right. peak or something. Yeah, it, it's, it, it's got plenty of power. It boogies. It absolutely boogies. And it'll have a boy. It'll have a boy sitting on the back of it. Maybe even in about an hour. Oh. Hmm. Did you get the... Uh, no, no, I don't have any of that on yet, and but we, he, can, he can live life wild. You know what you could get? You could get from Surly now? You know what you could get from them because they got a new thing? Remember the Sunrise Bar? How, yeah. How great that is? Yeah. Now they have a Sunset Bar. Oh. And see how they did that? I see that. Like, see, clever? the same bar, they, they just changed the name? I just love how people are coming up with <clears throat> new stuff that's not that new. Right. 
seems to be like everybody's doing it. But they're doing it, and they did it. And they not only have 27 more millimeters of rise, seven degrees more back sweep and seven degrees more up sweep. So you're even... That sounds really nice. You're even more like super chill moto action. Look at that. Yeah. I don't necessarily like the bars that much on my... I mean, they're fine and they fit well and stuff, but I miss my... my If if you feel like you're uh, hunched over a little bit too much, those uh, sunset bars might... Do the trick. Might do the trick. Because... you can find those at Surly Bikes, I imagine. Probably there's a link in the show notes or something. I so, guess you could probably get the them the at notes. Pronghorn Bicycle. Let's find out. <gasps> I wonder I'm, if they sell them at Pronghorn Bicycle. I'm pushing the button Utah. right now. Hey, welcome to the radio program. Caller, who do we have on the line? Hi, guys. It's Mark Peterson. Uh, I just want to say it's good to talk to you again. It's <laughs> it's good to talk to you. It's been a while, Mark Peterson, from Ogden, Utah. Yes, it has been. How how have you guys been? Been good. We Hanging were, in there. We were just talking about the new Surly Sunset Bars from those guys at Surly Bikes and wondering if those are available at Pronghorn Bikes yet. Yeah, they are. Uh, we do not carry them in stock, of course, like anything like that. We're going to have to order them in. But, yeah, we, we can totally get them. Right on. Are you still gainfully employed by said bike shop? I am. I am, in fact. Excellent. Excellent. And how was the summer season? Because oh, huh. I, it's been a while since we talked to you. It's pretty much pretty much been the summer. So how's it been going? It's been going incredible. Um, the shop is doing incredibly well. We've already doubled what we did last year in service. And um, amazingly enough, after just a little under two years, we're already in the black. So wow. that's, a, that's a pretty profound statement. Most, yeah. most companies it takes three to five. Yeah, if they ever, See, if they ever if they get they ever there at all. See, what I'm reading out of that, yeah, Mark, yeah. is that you're going around and busting everyone's bikes so they have to bring it in for service. Yeah, throwing tacks out on the road and stuff like that? Yeah, that's yeah, probably Mark. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. yeah that, that's what I do. Yeah, that's pretty much. Pretty much. Yeah. What else has been going on, man? good thought if you think about it. But, <laughs> uh, just uh, try, try, uh, I'm actually doing my best to make sure I can get more people on bikes. Anything I can do to get more butts on bikes makes me happy. Excellent. Yeah, be- I, like I mean, besides just wanting to catch up uh, with you, I had noticed that uh, on the Facebook you had posted some stuff about the new BMX track there and how you were refurbing yeah. some bikes that had been given to you to give to some of the, the kids at the track. Kind of fill us in on what that's all about. Yeah, what a great opportunity. My friend Eric Robinson uh, came into the shop one day and he said, hey, I got five BMX bikes if you want them. And I said, uh, yeah. <laughs> I love bikes. Give me more bikes. And so we went over to the track and he, intro- he introduced me to the head guy and um, the big guy uh, that kind of set up this entire uh, antelope BMX situation. Um, his name's in my head, but I can't think of it this second, but that's all right. Anyhow, he, he said, here, here's these bikes from last year's. They were kind of like five feet up bikes. Three of them were like minis or micros, I guess you would call them, like for really young kids. Sure. And then two of them were kind of uh, mid, mid-school mid adult type bikes. And he said, hey, here, here, you can have these. You can do what you want with them. And from what I understand, that you kind of refurbish them and give them back. You don't have to do that, but, you know, if you want to, that would be awesome. And Eric are obviously knew that, I was going to be all about trying to like give these back to people because it's the single coolest thing I've ever done in my life is give a bike to someone that's nice. just, it's the coolest. Yeah. Yeah. And so, um, over the last summer I've, uh, gone through and refurbished four of these bikes and gotten them, you know, completely dialed back in and, you know, put a little money into them, put chains on them, put cables and housing and grips on them. And, maybe tires and tubes and stuff like that and you know, tune them up, make sure that they're good to go for these people. And then the intention is, uh, well, we already had the first one last Saturday night was the grand opening of Antelope BMX. And, uh, they had a nationals race there, which was double points. And, um, I, I spent the first part of the evening kind of looking for who I wanted to give this bike that I brought with me, uh, mm-hmm. out to the races who, who I wanted to give it to and see, that's kind of a challenge when you're looking for like a six or seven year old, 
It's that's a, it's a creepy <laughs> yeah. process. Hey, hey, bearded guy, what are you, what are you <laughs> looking at the kid for? <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Exactly. So, I, I, needless to say, I spread the the thought out amongst other people, uh, including the big guy at the track, and said, "This is what I'm looking for. I'm looking for someone who's going to be able to take this bike and it's going to stoke them, and it's going to help their family." And it's not going to be a hindrance. It's not going to be something that is just ignored later on. Like they just put it in the corner and they're like, ah, whatever. It's got to be for a kid that is just ravenous for the sport right now. And I saw this one kid that just kept looping during practice on Saturday. He just kept looping and looping. And he had like the the paper plate, number plate on his uh, nice. rider looping bike. Yeah, yeah. And it was, it was a full on like Walmart bike. And I, this kid just kept going and going and he did probably seven laps. And I'm like, that's the kid. That is the kid. So I talked to a couple of my cohorts and they agreed. And so, uh, Eric actually accompanied me kind of following this kid back to his parents and then getting his parents attention without the kid noticing. <laughs> and uh, uh, once we got the sneaky, yeah, yeah. So once we trusting. got trusting, yeah. Right. So, we got the, the, the dad's uh, attention and the dad had a, something surprising to say. He said, you know, he's kind of fading out on it right now, but our daughter is going bonkers. She would, <laughs> this would cha- change her situation. And I was like, Oh, do you want to see the bike? And he's like, yeah, absolutely. So I, I took him back to my car where the bike was at and I showed it to him and he was like, Oh my God, are you serious? This, this would totally make her summer. She would just go, off, she'd go off on this. I was like, there we go. That That's who it is. <laughs> and the the really kind of cool thing of it was, is Eric said, hey, do you want me to get you up announced in front of the crowd and do this all? And I was like, no, no, don't, no, 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 no. This isn't, this is not about me. This is, I, I'm not looking for any kind of, you know, credit. All I want to do is make some kids night, like, and maybe their summer. And so we snuck up on them at the perfect time with the bike and uh, we showed it to her and uh, we said, what do you think of that? And she was like, Oh, this is super cool. And was like trying to get on it all at once. And her her <laughs> nice. little buddy who's right next to her in, in these, B- they're both in like full BMX leathers and full face helmets. And they're all of two feet tall <laughs> are, are trying to get on this bike and stuff, you know? And it was like Ewoks and BMX and, <laughs> and, and she was super excited and she got on the bike and I said, let me get a picture of you. And I got a little bit of video of it too, but I also got a picture where the look on her face was just, uh, I'm getting goosebumps thinking about it right now, man. It's that's, that's yeah. what I'm here for. Gonna need that for the that's show. Notes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, Hey, guess what? We're, uh, you know, that I, at the starting line of the BMX track, it's usually the highest part. So we're, we're getting to the top of the hill. Right at the starting gate. We're at the starting gate this week with <laughs> with our uh, beer run. There we go. Uh, JK made a very very good lunchtime stop at uh, Downer Liquor there and picked up a six pack of Carbon Four Brewing's Fantasy Factory with some of the best artwork. Yeah, that, it, that, it's something that's we've we've had this. The reason before, I had this beer the first time. time was the artwork, yeah. and I'm like, okay, it's not only great artwork, but it's great beer. Yes, it's, it's a, a kitty key. cat with a with a gold pistol in its hand riding Bring a, a unicorn, unicorn breathing fire yeah yeah that's what it is <laughs> it's good artwork well, and as described that's totally what it is like i don't even need to see the label and that yeah, yeah i see it i see it yeah good stuff you are you uh are you imbibing of the uh the beer where you are there in utah mark <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, I always have a nice cold beer at the right time, especially at the top of the hour, and uh, it's just uh, the standard PBR. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Always, a, always a good choice. Is is the PBR in Utah, well, is that 3.2 beer now, or do you get full-on, full 4.5% caps there? It, yeah, yeah, it's it's the 4.5%, 5% or whatever it is I, yeah. now. So it's, I actually, it's not three, nothing in Utah is 3.2 anymore. Oh, okay. I, I yeah. actually had it in a bottle yesterday, Mark, and it was delicious. Yeah. That was left over from when Ken yeah. Keen was on the show. Yeah, is that right? I think, or something. Double nickels? Yeah, double nickels. I'll tell you what, you you, you get a nice cold one, and it, it's hard to beat, especially Absolutely. after the ride. Absolutely. Yeah, especially since you can session them a little bit on the paps. Right. 
I don't know about the carbon four. I forget what this yeah. is. This is like six, six seven, six point three. three. Yeah, six so three. Not yeah. bad. Not too bad. Hey, Mark, did you uh, did you watch any of the Olympic cycling events during the last couple of weeks? I did not watch them the way that I wanted to watch them. I did try to keep up on them, and I am pretty amazed with Tom Pitcock and his capabilities. And I think that the U.S. did really, really well. Um, I I think the mountain biking needs to have downhill yes. in the Olympics. I think that uh, the cross country and all that kind of stuff get a little bit washed out. But you know, that's me. Yeah, and I mean, we've seen this before. I, I think in London or wherever that the courses they make for the cross country mountain bike are more suited towards road racers really. And Pidcock's a, an awesome, you know, tour de France yeah. type rider too. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, well, you could ride a drop bar bike on them. Yeah. What I'd like to see, except for that one section, there was a, some little rock drops and stuff, but I didn't yeah. see much on there. And not to say that I would have blasted over that stuff without killing myself, but the rest of the course was really 99% power, 99% engine, you know? And, uh, yeah, I don't know. Yeah. I'd kind of like to see like an enduro setup where it's kind of like a, a world rally deal where you have like transition stages and then you're timed on a certain part of it, but you get to it the start at your appointed time and you go and, you know, something that would be, I, I don't know, to me more interesting, I guess. Well, there's, there's, there's so many cool combinations that are, it could be possible out there. Look at all the different other sports that they've done things with in the Olympics where they've combined multiple disciplines within one realm. Just imagine the same kind of thing in mountain biking or cycle cross or gravel or cross country or road bike. Just if you could take the standard thing and then also have these other offshoots where it would just be awesome. But I don't know. We'll get there eventually. Yeah. So do you know that uh, that, that Remco Evanapol won both the time trial and the road race, which is like phenomenal mm-hmm. after having come in third at the Tour de France a few weeks back? But the cool thing, and I actually heard it today, I was reading something that he wrote because he took a few days to kind of put his thoughts into words. And um, they had considered not doing the swimming portion of the triathlon because the Seine River is, so you know, people were getting sick and stuff. <laughs> and so they were going to make it a do <clears throat> ath- They were going to make it a duathlon was was like the Wednesday between the time trial and the road race. And he's like. I seriously considered if they would have done a duathlon entering the duathlon. <laughs> it's like, you know, he was. Yeah. In, it's just like the guy is 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 made for speed. But uh, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. And last week, last week was track racing. I and I got to admit, I'm not like super knowledgeable about it. But some of the events were really cool. If you get a chance to watch the Madison yeah, I, event, try and find a, a rerun of that one hour Madison event. It was so badass. I, I try to watch all the stuff that's on the velodromes just because anything in a velodrome is just badass. I mean, that's the first thing you, you get on a velodrome. You are no sissy rider. You, you are going at it. Um, especially when you look at the steepness of those, those banks, those no one's that's no joke, man. Those, those people get around that track quick. Bro. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Do you guys have an active velodrome in, in your area there in uh, the Salt Lake City area, the Ogden area out there? Uh, I think there's one somewhere, but not really to speak of. Like, to be honest with you, it's 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 kind of a in in a dead zone right now. I think it has potential. I think it can grow, just like BMX. Um, I think BMX has a bigger chance of getting hold because it's just kind of a grassroots kind of thing. The entire thing with Antelope BMX was totally grassroots. Like, and, and I could be getting this totally wrong, but uh, I believe a policeman from the local area and also BMX enthusiast is the one who pushed the entire thing mm. through and made this thing happen over several years and that that impresses me, and it, it makes me think that the community, especially after the last Saturday night, there were probably 350, 400 people there, cool. and yeah. they were all racers or families of racers, and they were from all over the country. I mean, I don't mean just Utah. They were coming from California and all over cool. the place to come and race at this race, and they're hoping to eventually have national levels races there. And the track is just amazing. And I could just see this being a thing. Like every weekend, you know, people head to the track and that's what they do. That's that's their yeah. hobby. That's what it is. 
And it's kind of hard to do that without having a track. And the same, it's hard to do that without having a Velotrol. Yeah. Yeah, we, we're fortunate in that uh, it, in Kenosha, Wisconsin, we have one of the most active tracks in the country. Um, so about 40 miles south of us. And uh, some, some of your uh, luminaries <laughs> from the cycling industry, like uh, Len Cavalterra, by the way, mm-hmm. uh, are regulars down yeah. there still, even at his advanced age of 101 or whatever he is. Well, he's younger than me, yeah. but not that, awesome. much, not that much younger. Um, and then, sure, uh, sure. and for the BMX side, you know, we've had an indoor BMX track here for like 40 years. That's at 40 miles a different direction, but I don't know if it's, is it still active? I think it's still active, Elkhorn. Oh. So in the winter, people got a place in a shed to go ride bikes, which is kind of cool. Well, and we got the yeah, yeah. skate park too. You can throw a BMX in there. Oh, yeah, you? you can throw your BMX inside. Four uh, Seasons. Not Four Seasons. Maybe Four Seasons. One of them you can only do skate, but one of them you can do skate and bike. So yeah, that's cool. Uh, well, I hope it takes off. I noticed yeah. um, when I was when I was looking for the uh, I I put the uh, link in the show notes to the Antelope BMX, and I got the right one because there is an Antelope Valley BMX track in California. <laughs> I was like, oh yeah, yeah, totally different thing. Yeah, so no, but I found the right one. It just uh, yeah, they suck compared to you guys, right? Well, right. most of them are moving to Utah anyway. Well, right. I, I don't know about that. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I I figure any track anywhere is awesome. And uh, more, more, more people racing, the better. It is just a cool experience. I hadn't experienced it until the other night since I was a kid. And nice. so as a 50, 54 year old rolling up on a BMX track and watching an entire set of qualifications and racing, um, it just, Oh God, it lit a fire under me and it made me really want to try to figure this out. And here's the thing. No bike shops carry BMX stuff. None of them. Yeah, everybody them everybody goes here, online to, I stuff. think, Dan's now or whatever. Is yeah, pretty, yeah. Kind of got to go to Dan's. Exactly, exactly. But those people need stuff, and they need them at races. And so I'm trying to find a way to uh, propose to my management that we invest in a small amount of quantity of product and that we take it to the races with us. Uh, I have a really strong response from the crowd on what they, whether they thought that was a good idea or not. They're like, oh, that would be the most awesome thing in the whole world. But if we could like, if we just, just think for like $2,000 worth of product, the amount of impact that you could have on a BMX community in, in somewhere like right. Utah right. Yeah. in just yeah. one year, like for 2000 bucks. Well, you know, if you remember past conversation, I, I was I was on the road as a sales rep for a, a local Midwest distributor. So I went to, I don't know, 80, 80 shops a month or something. And the shops that did well with BMX back then, I think would be not necessarily the same shop, but the same attitude. Either it was a completely dedicated shop and the guy was a racer and he had racer friends that worked there and they had a bunch of people that were in the community that yeah, were racing yeah. or... It was a, a yep. it was like a dedicated portion of a larger shop where again it was active participants in the sport and they did really well with their little because nobody else was doing it in their area. I don't think we have a super I mean, does Bigfoot Chicago, do BMX? Uh, Bigfoot does do a little. Yeah, there bit might of BMX, be a little bit here, but there's not. You're like, going to Chicago to see Dirty Dan. Yeah, or Rock. Is he in Rockford or Chicago? He's works at a shop in in Chicago right. proper. Yeah, so and it's pre- predominantly BMX bikes. Yeah, and you know BMX down there where you've got an active community isn't just racing; it's also street stuff. Yeah, you know, so cool stuff. Oh yeah, 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 and freestyle. There's you there's know, a lot of freestyle. There's yeah. all kinds of aspects of BMX stuff. You know, I mean, and you can sell all kinds of stuff, but racing BMX stuff is kind of specific. It's really specific. In Absolutely. Fact. Um, the size of grips that they need for those micros, the the kind of seats that they need on those bikes, the headsets that they need on the bikes, um, chains, tires, tubes, all that stuff um, is not readily available very quickly. Like, it's yeah, we can order it for you, but if we had just a little bit of stock of that, it wouldn't take much of an investment to start developing uh, a reputation for having that. And then having a reputation as being the only shop that does that, then you get more demand that, that allows you to buy more product to stock more things. And it kind of carries on and on. I, I understand you wouldn't want to go out and buy like a hundred pairs of BMX pants and all the different sizes and different sure. colors thinking that you're going to sell them in a year in one area. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Right. But right. at the same time, may, may, maybe it's not a buy bad idea to get a couple pairs, like two or three pairs. And yeah. see what happens. 
Yeah, you it's know? interesting because most of the major uh, distributors to uh, independent bike shops like Pronghorn don't carry BMX stuff. And if they do, it's like repair grade or whatever. Um, but they're really not into yep. it either. So you kind of have to find a dedicated distributor for BMX stuff too or go direct to manufacturers, which, you know, that requires a lot of work. It's a lot of time to make those relationships work. So Exactly. And I, I've been kind of trying to re-envision what my future looks like, what, what it shapes up to be. And I kind of, I'm fancying the idea of me becoming the BMX guy and taking the show on the road and going all over the country and selling pronghorn products to people all across the country and promoting BMX and making it happen in my old age. I like that idea. So Um, my my body (coughs) is not responding well. I had a wreck uh, about... Three, yep. four weeks ago where I went down hard. I, I belly flopped at about 16 miles an hour Oof. onto the pavement. And um, I've got some deep bone bruises and stuff. And my body is just not, it just, it just doesn't recover like Get, it used to. Getting old sucks, man. Yeah. Can't, can't, can't fall down anymore. Yeah, yeah. You don't have to stop, but you have to stop falling so, down. But I can encourage other people to go fast and fall down. So. Yeah, <laughs> right. And, it, and I then, can do that. Youngins. Right Youngins, yeah. The youth of the, our, yeah. our world. Uh, so what, um, you said exactly. you're, fi- you said you're 54. Uh, what month is your birthday in? April, April 4th, sir. So you'll be 55 next April. Double nickels. Double nickels. Guess yeah. what they got yeah. here now yeah. at the River West 24? They have, uh, a, they, they have a class for, it's called the elder yeah. class. Ooh. And you have to be 55 right. or older. Tony's 55 or older. I'm 55 right. or older. JK is not 55 or older yet. But we can have up to Chewy. six people yeah, on this yeah. team. Chewy, yeah, we could. Lunds? If you can make nice. Lunds is close. Nice. He's knocking on the door. I don't know if he's, he might be there by next year. because We in, could podium. He's in February. We could podium uh, for this no. class if you come. Otherwise, I don't think we can do it. But <laughs> if you come to Milwaukee next, the end of. Uh, no the, pressure, no pressure, no the, pressure. The end of July next year, <laughs> none, you would none. have a blast and we would have a blast having you. So just keep that in the back of your yeah. mind. It's almost uh, a year uh, away. So, you know. You know. We got places to yeah, stay, yeah, people yeah, to see, can, food to eat, beer to drink. Eat. Exactly. Yep. I, it's it's a worthy thing to point it out. I'll, I'll, I'll even drive out it. there and pick you up, so we can we can stop by uh, one of my favorite spots in the world in Kansas and ride an Imba Epic Trail where nobody would ever expect an Imba Epic mountain bike oh, trail. God, that'd be awesome. <laughs> oh, it's so. Good. Oh, that'd be yeah. awesome. Uh, all right, Mark. What do you got? So, Anything I, to I, uh, I take take us out with today? Oh, it's six thirty. Right. I, I, I just I just I, I really wanted to say it's it's great to talk to you guys. I miss you. I love you. I hope you're all doing really well. I hope everyone out there is finding what they need to find and that, you know, the a bicycle is part of it. And Absolutely. I can't tell you how much it means to be part of the, the cycling community. This is the stuff that is keeping me going through all the physical things that I'm having to deal with. And I can't thank you enough. Thank Here you. you. No, it, it's always always a welcome sound when your voice yep, is on the absolutely. other end of the line. So absolutely, don't be a stranger. But wait, he's got to, as usual, you got to plug. I don't. Got to plug the, uh, the, the, yeah, the well, shop. It, 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 if you're ever in Ogden, Utah, please stop by a Pronghorn Bicycle in Syracuse or Perry. Um, and just look them up on your Google. You'll be able to find us. But come in and see me. Come say hi. We've got amazing products, and everyone that works there is a bike nerd. Like genuine, like everyone is just passionate about bikes. So it's kind of different than a regular bike shop. So uh, I hope to see you guys say hi to me and we'll give you a discount or something. I don't know. <laughs> right on. I want a free hat. Yeah. Pronghorn hat. You got it. Send, send, got send it. them and we'll wear I them on, on the you. show. All right, Mark. Uh, thanks again for oh, calling oh, in. Yeah. yeah cool. Great <laughs> talking to you, man. Good. Catch, right on. Catch hey, you next good time. Good talking to you guys. Love you and have a great night. All Peace right, and love. Bye. 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 Excellent, Mark Peterson, Ogden, Utah. Doing made that, the so show a success. I do, well, it kind of cued me up that we hadn't talked. I think we made it up. We were going to talk a month or so back, and then he got busy at the shop or something and couldn't call in. So I'm glad uh, kind of reawoke me to Mark by seeing the Facebook post with this yeah, BMX I, thing. Glad he's okay from that crash. And it takes a long yeah, time to heal. Uh, but tell me about yeah, it. That I'm sounds three weeks into the ankle roll thing, and my shoulder still hurts. So I don't want to do I, that again. You talked about that last night. It does not sound fun. <laughs> no, it's getting better. Uh, you guys like Swerve clothing? Oh, I love uh, it. It's been a while. 
fifty percent off their shorts. You know they're they're shutting down, but they still have a bunch of inventory. Oh, and their shorts are great. They're normally a hundo. Now they're fifty mm. or whatever they are, but they're super well made. So if, uh, put it in the show notes. Yep, yeah, Swerve on sale. Swerve shorts on sale. Says right in the show notes. Here's something from John Burke. Trek. I know. King guy. of Trek. You can't buy a Trek online and have it delivered directly to you. So we're going to change that. Dun, dun, oh, come on. Dun, dun, dun. Trek's delivered to your door? Trek's delivered to your door. By John. I'm not buying also, him. By him. So. I'm not buying by, yeah, by, by himself, him, he sells. Also, you can pay extra for the premium service and have a bike shop assemble your bike. Mm, I have you. But, I know, but <laughs> we're not a Trek dealer, so. Good. You know. But if you're, you only make money at this if you're a dealer, if you're a Trek premium partner, which means you bought it, that you drank the Kool-Aid, you bought into the thing, you make it like maybe a wheel and sprocket. No. We get an overriding, <laughs> no. I don't know. I'm just, you know, I mean, I guess it's it's the way of the world now in the online thing. I'm just, I don't, dang well, I'm not sure about I, that. I, I, anyway, that's what he said. We're going to change that. Okay. Meaning you can buy a Trek online, apparently. Apparently. Uh, here's another one. I think this is great, though. That's not great. This is great. Okay. CPSC, Consumer Product Safety Commission, or whatever yeah. it is. Mm-hmm. Well done. Um, Amazon is liable for hazardous products it sells. And I believe this came around from the shitty, fiery apartment fire batteries. But other things that they sell, even through third-party vendors. They can be liable they for. They can be liable for. Good. Right. I just bought Joy Division oven mitts. Would that be covered under? Are they actually? <laughs> sounds do awesome. they have? <laughs> what? I'll show you. A I gotta show a picture of that. All right. While he's looking that up, I got spam comment of the week. <laughs> oh, nice. Um, AI. Actually, well, I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Are you fucking kidding me? Uh, Come uh, on. Let me see. Where okay, did you get, 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 get these? Get oh, wow. Okay. That's pretty right on. <laughs> oh, those are gorgeous. Didn't you hear where he just said he got them? Amazon? Yeah. yeah. So he can sue them when his hands burn off. Right. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. <laughs> uh, spam comment of the week. The level of my fascination with your work matches your own enthusiasm. Your, ah. your sketch is elegant, and the authored material is impressive. Nevertheless, you appear concerned about the prospect of being headed in a direction that could be seen as dubious. <laughs> I agree that you'll be able to address this concern promptly. This is fucking AI. I know, but that one was good. It's but then there's funny. another one. I mean, I can't stop. Hello, I really like your writing so a lot. Share we keep up correspondence. Extra approximately your post on AOL. Wait. I need an expert in this house to unravel my problem. Oh. Maybe that is you taking a look ahead to see you. <laughs> so at any point in the word extra, <laughs> is there three X's? No. Triple X? No. I mean, because this sounds like a porn comic. No, 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 no. They're, I've seen those, though, yeah. Triple X, triple X, triple X, 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 Yeah, no. I just, I, I, someday we'll stop the spam comment of the week, but not this week, apparently. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, so we did it again, and uh, thanks to our good friend Mark Peterson, we mostly didn't have to do anything this show, as far as I know. Software update. What? Oh, okay. Let me do that. <laughs> Don't look over my shoulder at my password so I can have that happen at midnight tonight. Um, we'll be back next week, I guess, for uh, show number 268. That's what we do. That's what we do. Hi. 